So, with Stars and Stripe Part D, Star Girl Season 1 comes to an end. And did it deliver? Did it give it a good send off for the final season? Yes, it did. <laughs> It was the final episode. Did we get superhero versus supervillain action? Yes, yes, we did. And uh, they spent some money on it. The, the scene of the machine, uh, it's hidden under the football field at the high school uh, that shows up. Now, granted, uh, due to scheduling problems and uh, uh, wanting to get to it before the day's over, uh, I had to watch the first part on, on my phone, so maybe it looked better on the phone than it did on the big screen. But, I, you know, I watched it on the bigger screen later. To catch up, uh, and uh, it, it looks good, you know, if, for what it is for TV shows and all that. Don't know that they'll have that. In fact, I'm pretty sure they won't have that kind of money for the next uh, season because, uh, well, DC Comics is in a lot of trouble. And I don't know how this will perform in its CW uh, version. Uh, I, I have not seen the CW version of this show and maybe it's not as good, but I, I, I doubt it because what's best about it is its plot points and how they handle their stories and how they they kind of managed to write the ship halfway through because it started out pretty bad. And a lot of stuff that I just can't stand, which maybe some people do like the, you know, teenage so uh, high school soap opera drama. And for that aspect, this show is geared more for a younger audience than, than for me. Um, and, and, and I could recommend it for that. I, cause, uh, all, all in all, and you know, I kept comparing it to the flash as far as CW style shows go. And this, it is a CW show. There's no point in, uh, differentiating it anymore. And, uh, but it is, uh, at that good is as good as the flash got when the flash can be good. But lately the flash has had been dragged down by really horrible <laughs> plots of filler episodes and whatnot. And uh, it's terrible because when it's good, it's very good. And uh, this one, pretty damn close to that. I'm still not. I still would when the flat. I like the Flash better, but this one is pretty close. So they uh, they ended all the and as predicted, the uh, uh, I think some of these adult characters of the uh, supervillains, despite being pretty interesting, uh, probably won't be coming back. Icicle was the leader of the group. Uh, well, he gets shattered into ice, <laughs> ice cubes, <laughs> at the end, uh, by uh, Courtney's brother, of, of all people, using a pickup truck. So it's a pretty humiliating end for that idiot. But uh, <laughs> you know. And the whole thing about the uh, plot where I, you know, I said, hey, that's kind of the SJW uh, desires <laughs> that the Justice Society wanted. Uh, they, yeah, they didn't really uh, change that or anything, uh, but the, the overall point was that they were taking people's free will away, and the machine uh, activated and it affected uh, mature minds, and the adults were being affected, and they were all zombified, staring there, and they had a certain amount of time to uh, end the threat before the program was uh, final. And uh, so until then, they had their battle. Uh, Solomon Grundy, finally get to see him in the light this time, and uh, he does battle with uh, Pat Dugan and Stripe and all that until he tears the robot to pieces and finally Our, Our Man shows up. Now Our Man had a moment with Wildcat where he told her he was going to kill Solomon Grundy in revenge for his parents and she's a little put off by it uh, which is odd because <laughs> well <laughs> when she is able to confront Brainwave um, she slits his throat <laughs> <laughs> this is one of these things where I I don't know if you've seen the CW version let me know in the comments below did they actually show that or are they just sort of hinted at it or what I don't know uh, so that, that's one of the things that I don't think they can uh, keep doing that sort of stuff even though this was a pretty tame show compared to uh, certainly Doom Patrol or uh, Titans uh, they didn't have a whole lot of that stuff but uh Every now and then, yeah, <laughs> something like that. But there it is, and the Courtney wit uh, comes and finds you know brainwave dead, on, brainwave dead on the floor, and she's a little disturbed by this. So they're going to follow through with Yolanda. It's going to be a bit of a problem, and uh, I don't know where they're going. I uh, now is she's guilt ridden that she didn't forgive Henry, who apparently as of now, yes, he's dead. I know I suspected he might not be, and they played with that, but it was really Brainwave doing an illusion, and she figures it out and kills him. Um, but, you know, that it would follow the comic book story, 
But uh, maybe he is dead or maybe he did survive. I, <laughs> they'll save that for another season. But at this point, she's driven by that, that as mad as she was at him, she still cared about him. And uh, now he's dead. And so she took her revenge on him and actually did what our man said he was going to do. Did our man do the same? No, he did not. <laughs> he gets the better of Solomon Grundy, beats him to where Solomon Grundy is begging for mercy in his, you know, <laughs> stupid animal way. And he gives his puppy dog look at our man, and our man can't bring himself to do it. He feels sorry for him. Uh, he tells him to leave and never come back. And he, you know, <clears throat> shuffles off with his tail between his legs. And uh, that's it for Solomon Grundy. Of course, he could come back. Uh, Shiv manages to kill her father, although I don't think he is dead because they've already established both of them had these regenerative abilities. So she wounds him pretty bad, but perhaps Dragon King can, uh, you know, regenerate and come back. Uh, he nearly kills uh, Sir Justin, but uh, uh, but uh, Shiv comes along and uh, gets her revenge on Daddy. Later on, in a little teaser of what's to come, she is, is snooping through their storage of stuff and finds that they had the Eclipso crystal, so uh, she's going to release that. If you're a DC Comics fan, you know what that's about. Another teaser is uh, one of their members who just didn't want to be a part of this plan shows up, uh, the uh, Shadow Thief, and uh, so he'll probably be the big bad uh, next season. Plus, they've established the kids of these people, so I imagine Icicle's son's going to want revenge, despite clearly having a crush on Courtney, and that could create problems there, they always like to play with the superhero and supervillain being in love, <laughs> all that stuff. So you got all that to look forward to. <laughs> and I, I was kind of worried about that they would get rid of all the adult characters and it would just be the kids. But with Shadow Thief and the like, and Gambler gets away, so he's probably a guy they'll have him, you know, around. But um, so they'll still have a mix of it uh, to not give it over to you know high school soap opera crap. Uh, and all of that. So, it, it, but as they've managed to up the ante on the show, uh, steer it in a better direction than what it seemed to be going at the outset, uh, and they they found this balance between their silliness and the dark stuff, and it it, it makes a, a, fa a fairly competent uh, show for what it is. Um, it's not really for me, <laughs> but it's not a bad show. I can't sit here and say it's it's really awful. Um, some things are predictable, of course. Ultimately, uh, you, you had to have known that Courtney was going to come around and accept Pat as her father. Uh, this was obvious from previous episodes, and they, they did play that out very well. And so Pat's being taken over by the program, but love saves him. Yes, <laughs> because when Courtney refers to him as her father, uh, you know, he comes around. Uh, and it doesn't kill him now the, because they, they demonstrate that any any minds that were resistant to the program would die. And they, they show one of the school teachers, his brain was apparently resistant to this programming and he drops dead. Uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so the uh, you know, he is her father and they demonstrate it again very well narratively and, uh, you know, and through the or organic nature of the story where her real father shows up and all that and how he steps in and defends her and he's teaching her and all this. He's being a father to her. And it caps off at the end. They jump ahead to Christmas. And what does she do? The, the gift she'd been holding for her father since she was a little girl, she gives it to Pat. And it's a coffee cup saying, you know, world's greatest dad and all that sort of thing. So there you go. Full circle on that. It's a father and daughter team. And, they should, of course, they have to play a dumb music montage but fortunately the scenery is pretty good it's you know she's flying around or well riding <laughs> the uh, star staff and he's in his robot you know well in his robot and they're flying around and stuff and all that and then they give you the clues of what's coming next which was shadow thief and eclipse so and so all well settled so they also kind of shoehorned in early on the uh, son of the fiddler and, uh, and and right at the beginning they show him uh, acting out against the bullies on and beating one of them with his tuba, apparently. <laughs> so that'll be his weapon of choice, I guess. And uh, the kid had called him tubatard. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so I beat him in the face with it, you know. So uh, I, I assume it's going to have some sort of sonic powers later on, but anyway. And then uh, I'm sure we'll get into Icicle Sun uh, finding out that he'll hold Courtney responsible for the death of his father and want revenge despite his deep feelings for her. Yeah, 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 difficult conflict there, huh? So, uh, so it wraps up uh, very well. Uh, and uh, it, it didn't really do anything to, to ruin it as far as the, the achievements they had achieved. Uh, the, the episode for Shiv was still easily the best one, and, uh, but uh, none of these shows took away from that afterwards. There was no filler, and uh, that's a powerful lesson to learn. That's what kills The Flash. The Flash uh, has a lot of these episodes that are really good and strong because they have a strong cast, and then it's followed up with some piece of crap. And so, uh, coming to CW, I would recommend they cut the episode amount, even less than this. No doubt they're not going to have the money that they obviously spent on this one for another season as, uh, well, DC's in trouble. Uh, they've just announced layoffs and everything uh, at the DC Comics and uh, the DC Universe service. That's going to be gone you know, any minute now. <laughs> Which is sad. I've enjoyed it, but, you know, I understand. And, uh, well, the adult shows will be on HBO Max, and uh, shows like uh, Stargirl will be on CW. Uh, but even so, CW superhero shows suffer greatly for having too many episodes with no material for it. And uh, also, they're expensive to do. So less episodes can save that money so that you can spend it where you need it, and tighten up your stories and get to the point without having to do dumb filler episodes where they sit around, do you think he likes me? I don't know, for an hour, you know, and uh, you, you just can't do that. It's going to mess up the flow this show achieved, and uh, but that's probably what will happen. But based on its performance here, I'll give it a shot. Now, I don't know where they're going with what the little last little teaser surprise they did, but... Uh, can't say it was all that surprising <laughs> of course starman is not dead uh yeah, joe McHale made one more little appearance at the end and uh i don't know so I, you know maybe he'll have some guest appearances for a story detailing how the staff works and whatnot and uh you know pat might even get jealous <laughs> <laughs> that this guy is becoming more of a father figure to her because he can teach her how to use it and all that We'll see where it goes, and maybe he'll have his own, and he'll be Starman again on his own. I don't know, but uh, that's you know what they did. Uh, you know, more just guest star appearances. I don't think he'd be a regular or anything like that. Uh, so there you go, Star Girl, uh, a a fine debut for the show. Uh, caught me by surprise. It's a little show that could, and uh, we'll see what it does. There's a lot of things that can derail it. And uh, but maybe maybe it can uh, persevere. So again, uh, yes, a good first season for uh, Star Girl. All right, thank you for watching and listening. So why not like and subscribe and check out that link description below? That'll take you to my mini stores and have plenty of goodies for you. You know, hats, mugs, stickers, posters, all that goody goody stuff. Plus, you can head over to indieplanet.com and pick up a copy of my comic book, Night Night. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Plus, you can also catch my podcast, Mr. Nelson Show, over at RadioMisfits.com. And you can also watch my videos on my channel at BitChute. That's the Mr. Nelson Channel on BitChute.com. <laughs>